Welcome to the City Manager's Report. The City Manager's Report, a look at city updates and municipal news, and a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. Your hosts, Emily Springstrow of Oshkosh Media, and City Manager Mark Roloff. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us on GovTV for your City Manager's Report, your source for all the latest and greatest updates happening right here in the city of Oshkosh, as well as a preview of the upcoming Common Council meeting agenda highlights. I'm your host Emily Springstrow, joined as always by our City Manager, Mark Roloff. Welcome Mark, thanks for joining us today. Great to be here Emily. It's always great to have you. So we're going to go ahead and dive into the hot topics for the first half of today's show. We'll take a little break and then we'll return with a review of the Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, January 22nd, 2019. And we've got a ton to talk about today, Mark, so we're going to dive right in. First update that we want to give is a, a little bit of a recap. On January 10th last week, um, you attended the Oshkosh Outlook annual meeting um, presentation. So uh, can you tell us how it went and um, kind of tell us what the program's all about every year? Uh, Citizens for Strong Oshkosh is an organization that seeks to improve public dialogue and public awareness of issues. And annually, they invite representatives from the city, Winnebago County, uh, Oshkosh Area School District, uh, Fox Valley Technical College and UW Oshkosh to talk about goals and, and uh, plans for the coming year. So I was able to talk about uh, infrastructure issues, um, some of the goals council set for me, uh, as well as other things that people would normally be asking me about. And then each of the other entities talked about what they do. And we also talk about some of the things we do collaboratively so that people understand how we work together, even though we're independent and have different missions that we do work together to accomplish goals for the entire community. Wonderful. So it's a great opportunity for community members to get plugged in um, in, in a variety of different instances and from a lot of different groups in the city. So we're, we're really happy to have been able to cover that on Oshkosh Media. So it's now airing on GovTV if you're interested in watching. I highly recommend it. Uh, like Mark said, a lot of different entities in the city um, giving their outlook for 2019. So you can view that at oshkoshmedia.org, our YouTube channel, um, or of course on our cable channels and Roku channel. Um, so moving down in our list, we've got a, a few different promotions here, and we've got the first annual Mascots and Movies, uh, I guess I shouldn't say annual, but the first event coming up on January 25th um, at the Oshkosh Senior Center North, a really fun new parks event. It's just an, an idea that uh, the folks at the Senior Center and the Parks Department came up with to, to invite people to come to the Senior Center, because the Senior Center really isn't just for seniors, but certainly that's a large part of it, but invite, uh, invite family members to come. Um, it's movies, it's popcorn, uh, the A&W Bear and all mm -hmm. that. Just a lot of fun stuff. They encourage people to, to just have fun with it. Bring a blanket, bring your beanbag chair, wear your PJs if you want to. <laughs> Any event that encourages me to wear my pajamas, I'm all about. So. Yeah, So <laughs> and, and it's, it's just an idea for people just to have a fun uh fun evening together with their family yes. and uh, best of all it's all free definitely um, and the movie they can't give the, away the title because, uh, for licensing reasons but they said it's a family favorite baseball movie and so it's it should be a good night well you got me intrigued so let's see what <laughs> happens uh, but come on along and find out definitely we encourage people to head out mascots and movies january 25th at 5 30 at the senior center north building um, another thing that we want to also promote a little bit on city managers report today is the new installation at the oshkosh public library it's called explorers grove um, and it's a really cool addition to the children's area on the lower level of the library. The library is always looking for new and exciting ways to uh, encourage uh, uh, children to come with their families to, in, to enjoy it, not just for the reading, but for the experiences that go along with it. So Explorers Grove is just a, a different twist on it, and they're going to have an open house on January 26th, a Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. I'm sure there'll be some some refreshments or something they always have. They're always great hosts over at the public library. But uh, it's really uh, just a way for children to, um, you know, have a little fun while they read and find a nice cozy spot and just a fun atmosphere. And these are just a few of the examples. Uh, and again, it's all about 
encouraging families to come participate, and encouraging reading. Yes, the way that they described it at the library is encouraging immersive play. Um, so not only are they encouraging people to read in different atmospheres, um, but also to kind of immerse themselves and do educational play. So they, they'll have a different, a couple, a few other different stations within this area that people can, uh, that kids can, you know, play with some educational toys, maybe learn a little bit, and then, you know, relate that back to their reading experience. And so we're really looking forward to this opening up. Um, once again, the uh, open house is January 26th, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Definitely come check it out, bring the kids, um, and it'll be open, of course, um, from that point forward. So looking forward to that. One other thing, Mark, that we wanted to uh, promote uh, I guess for dates wise, is the League of Women Voters Forum coming up on January 31st. This is for the mayoral uh, primary and it is from 5 to 6 p.m. We really encourage uh, people to come out and get educated at this forum put on by the League of Women Voters. Yeah, so uh, the, the, we have three candidates for mayor and uh, this is to narrow it down with the February 19th primary. And so we encourage people and then after that the general election will be on April 2nd. But you know, please note that the time is at 5 to 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, but the date's still the same. The date's still January 31st. Uh, and of course it's gonna be on GovTV and uh, uh, Oshkosh FM 101.9. Definitely. So if you can't make it that night, watch it on Oshkosh Media. Um, and then, of course, we always want to uh, urge people to vote in the primary February 19th. And then the general election will be on April 2nd. So uh, candidates forum, great way to get uh, educated on our uh, mayoral candidates. Uh, moving down our list, Mark, we've got another really exciting update, and that's from Go Transit. They just released their first ever mobile app uh, for riders. Really exciting stuff. It really is cool. Uh, it's available on uh, you know the the popular app uh, stores, whether it's the Apple App Store or Google Play, and all you got to do is punch in Go Transit Oshkosh, and you'll get all the different features that go along with it. You know, it's great. It's, it's real-time bus tracking, which is pretty cool. So you'll be able to see uh, you know, where the bus is. If it's around the corner and you can't see it, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see it on the app. Um, but but also, you know, different rider alerts if anything's going on that, that people need to be aware of. Um, and then and then the, the route, uh, making sure where, where do I want to go and mm -hmm. a little description of each route, uh, where the different stops are. And so you get the schedule and that's really the, the key is you, you know what the schedule is. You don't have to have the schedule in, the, in your pocket or anything like that. It's all right there, retrieving that schedule and whatnot. It really makes the whole experience of riding Go Transit uh, a lot more uh, convenient, I guess you could say. Um, it's it, it's a, like you said, a great way to check out where the bus is if you uh, if you're keeping an eye on how close it is, if the buses are running behind for those rider alerts, things like that. And then there's also a feature that you can provide feedback to the Go Transit uh, office through the app, um, which is another really great feature. Um, and then obviously you can contact them through the app too. So really, it, it's a really great addition for Go Transit. They're really excited about it. We encourage you to check it out. Um, and this was all part of the recently updated uh, transit development plan. Yeah, the, uh, every five years or so we uh, take a look at the plan and what we want to do. But we heard from our riders that these types of things they were very interested in. Uh, and so we're like, well, we can do that. And, uh, you know, the data is out there and the, uh, the technology is there that, that you can see where your, uh, where your bus is and uh, if they're if where exactly they're at, if you're running a little late, you can see well maybe the bus is is close to being there, and you you know how much time you have to to catch up with them. Definitely, exactly. So we encourage people to check out the Go Transit mobile app. Um, just search for Go Transit Oshkosh in your app store, whatever device you might have. Moving down our list, we want to make sure the public's aware that we posted a new Polco question on our citizen engagement tool. It's called Polco, um, and we're looking for input from you on the State of the City presentation. Uh, Mark, you're getting ready right now for your annual State of the City address, and you want to hear from the public on what they want to what they want to learn. Absolutely, and I only got a couple months left before we do it, and uh, part of it is is what would you like to hear mm -hmm. at the 2019 State of the City? You know, I certainly get a lot of ideas from different people, but uh, we're hoping that uh, our Polko participants, subscribers, will will chip in and, and give us some ideas. We've already gotten some pretty good ideas, and you know, it's, sometimes it's encouraging to see something that we've been thinking about because we've been we've been talking about it for a little while now. Uh, but it's also helpful to get reinforcement on those things and other things that people are saying. Well, we'd like you to know more about this or that. So mm -hmm. we're going to take all of those. Uh, you know, into consideration and try to one way or another incorporate those questions uh, into 
either my presentation or making sure that at the City Exhibit Expo that the departments have that information available. Uh, you know, I can't be up there all night, so the idea is, you know, I got about a half hour, 45 minutes tops, but the departments have tons of information that they'll make available to you. So give us your input and we'll make sure that somehow we incorporate it into uh, into our presentation or uh, into our exhibit. Yes, really looking forward to hearing what the uh, people in Oshkosh have to say and what they want to hear about um, and what they're talking about. So we also want to give a little State of the City reminder too. Mark, you said there's only a couple months left. So Monday, March 18th is this year's 2019 State of the City event. It starts at 6 p.m. The presentation will begin at 6.30. It's at the Oshkosh Convention Center and a really great opportunity to not only get a, a great state of the city address from the city manager but also to take advantage of the city exhibit expo and talk to uh, city staff about projects and um, plans that they have for the coming year so really looking forward to that encourage everybody to come out and get involved um, and then one more reminder that we have here, Mark, is just that next week is the last week for curbside Christmas tree pickup. It might seem like it's been forever since Christmas, um, but some of us have, have still kept our, our beautiful trees up, and we've got one more week to get rid of them. Yeah, as long as the needles aren't all over the place. But <laughs> January 21st is when we have to draw the line. So it's on your regular uh, trash pickup day, mm -hmm. So, but it's, uh, the last week will be the week of January 21st. And, of course, you know, if it snows, please don't, you know, please make sure it's not buried in snow please don't put in a plastic bag. We're going to naturally get rid of those things, so we don't want the plastic. And all the decorations and tree stands should be removed as well. Right, and if you miss the tr Christmas tree collection, you can always take advantage of the yard waste drop-off site as well. If you want more information on that, it's all on the city website. So now it's that time of the show, Mark, where viewers have the opportunity to ask their city manager anything they want about things that are happening right here in Oshkosh. It's time for the question mark segment, so let's see what the question this week is. Right, my question this week is, what is the local impact of the federal government shutdown? We've seen this in the news a lot, and it's a, it's a great question. Yeah, you know, I know that there may be some curiosity about this, and I'll give you a short question and then a, a, a short answer and then a long answer. The short answer is, for the city of Oshkosh, not a lot. Um, and the long explanation for that is that we are the recipient of federal monies but most of that money actually comes indirectly to us from the state. So for example, our transit aid comes to us from the federal government through the state of Wisconsin. A lot of it's cash flow. Now, the cynic in me with everything going on is that essentially what the government shutdown means is that recipients of federal money are essentially given the, uh, the federal government a free pass or even you could argue a free loan while they make whole on these things. We will continue to, for example, provide transit services. We're not gonna stop that. We have a budget for uh, transit aid. We will still get that when the shutdown ends, but from a cash flow standpoint, we're gonna have to float that money if the state stops uh, forwarding money to us. So far, the state hasn't stopped that, but at a certain point, they could hit a limit on how much they uh, can float cash for the federal government. So right now, it's not that big a deal. Other examples, our community development block grant program. That's federal monies for uh, improvements, a lot of blight elimination, removal, uh, benefiting uh, low and moderate income. Uh, technically, we need to use all of our prior year money before we can ask for the new money. And we haven't actually used last year's money completely yet, so we've got a little time before we would do that. Uh, the frustrating one for us is that we uh, apply for grants. Uh, you may recall an Economic Development Administration grant we had for the uh, Aviation Business Park. We're actually looking at one for uh, the Southwest Business Park, and we have to we have a deadline to submit that application. But now it's just going to sit in some uh, electronic in basket doing nothing for a while. Mm -hmm. So that's a little frustrating. But you know we've met the deadlines and we've submitted those things, and now we're waiting. Uh, and waiting and waiting until we hear from the Fed. So that's a little bit of frustrating. The social service side, the city doesn't provide social services. The county does uh, do the, does the social service stuff. You may see some things getting gummed up there. And even though it's not directly related to the city, I know people are curious about those things. And, uh, and I know the county's probably in the same situation. They're going to want to serve their clients, but it could become a cash flow issue for them. That may be an appropriate question for uh, the people asking that to asset of the county as well. Excellent. Well, thank you for the background, the rundown. Sounds like, long story short, not 
directly, but indirectly, yeah, there are a few things that are affecting the city. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, if you have a question that you'd like to send to Mark, send it to us on Twitter, send it to us on Facebook, or uh, send it to us on, via email at questionmark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us, and he'll answer it on the next episode of City Manager's Report. We're going to take a quick break here on CMR, and when we return, we'll go over the City Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, January 22nd, 2019. We'll be right back. Attention Roku and Apple TV viewers. Oshkosh Media's GovTV and Life TV are now streaming live on Roku and Apple TV with many programs in HD. Simply search for Oshkosh Media in the channel store on your Roku or Apple TV device and install the free Oshkosh Media channel. Open the channel to access live streams for either GovTV or Life TV. If you're one of the many who have decided to cut cable, you can still watch live local programming, government meetings, and community-produced shows and content on your favorite streaming device. Don't forget to check out Oshkosh Media online at oshkoshmedia.org or the Oshkosh Media Facebook page for schedules and more information. Welcome back to City Manager's Report. Thanks again for joining us. Now we're going to go over some of the highlights from the Common Council meeting agenda for this Tuesday, January 22nd, 2019. So, Mark, before the meeting starts, there's going to be a 5 o'clock workshop on the police staffing study. So um, tell us a little bit about some of the things they're going to be covering in this presentation. Uh, back in uh, 2018, the council had asked uh, me to take a look at staffing needs for public safety. And so the first half of that was police. Uh, we hired a firm called Matrix Consulting and they do nationwide consulting for police departments. Taking a look at our needs, our demands, and uh, where we deploy and how we deploy our personnel and are making some recommendations on how to more efficiently provide services and what staffing needs are there. We know that there are some staffing needs. Uh, we've reallocated, for example, uh, some some people into a, a drug and vice unit and we took those people off the street. So how do we make up for that loss and that reallocation? This study will address those issues. All right, and that segues nicely into our next item under consent that we want to mention is the purchase for seven 2019 police vehicles um, for the police department, uh, 189,000, a little over that. Um, this is something that is in the, uh, the budget every year, right? Annual budget to replace uh, squad cars and there are seven vehicles this year. Uh, and that's about normal for us. So, uh, you know, we, uh, we have detective vehicles, we have uh, community service officer vehicles, as well as the patrol vehicles. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, use a state bidding process, so we get some guaranteed low rates for what are called police interceptor vehicles. Uh, they have to go real fast and everything. Uh, so uh, we use that collective buying power uh, from the state and are able to get a very good price on our police vehicles. Wonderful. Moving down on consent, we've got the approval for fees for children's amusement rides, water equipment rentals, and tennis and pickleball courts for the Parks Department. Uh, tell us about that one. Well, this is an annual process that we review our fees, and uh, Parks is, is one of those. And so these are just the Parks uh, recreational type of fees for all those things, primarily down at Menominee Park. Um, and then the, the, the new one this year is for the do has to do with the tennis and pickleball courts there. Uh, it's a brand new court. The demand is super high. And so before spring kicks in and people really start using it, we want to make sure that people understand there is a rental rate if you want to reserve it. So, um, and, uh, and there are a lot of people that want to use it. So we thought it was appropriate. The Parks Board didn't, so they're recommending some very minor fees, and that's really just to, to manage the demand for that program. Wonderful. So we'll look forward to more information coming out on that as the seasons change as well. Moving down under pending ordinances, we've got a few items all related here. Um, one being amend the zoning ordinance to establish short-term rentals. Uh, the next one being creating section 8-12 uh, short-term rentals of the municipal code. And then finally amending the room tax ordinance. Um, so why don't you take us through these, Mark? Um, a lot of questions were raised at the last meeting about this topic. And then, you know, there's kind of been some updates since then. A lot of this is inside baseball stuff because this is really has to do with the uh, the uh, 
rental and lodging community. But um, the state had adopted some new laws on short-term rentals, and so we have to redo our ordinances in order to comply with those things. And a couple points along the way, we had to make some decisions. Um, there are certain thresholds that the state has that, for example, after 10 days, uh, any if you're renting for more than 10 days at all in a year, uh, you have to have a certain inspection done at the state. So our question is, do should we follow our, some of our regulations at 10 days just to make it a little simpler for a lodging establishment? Or it's really more for people who you think of Airbnb, but people who even rent uh, during EAA, and that's, that's the only thing they rent out for. There was a gentleman who had asked that we extend it to 16 days, and we're, we're taking a look at that. But there's some, uh, some pros and cons to doing it that way. We want to make it as simple as possible for you to comply with the state law as well as what the local, re local regulations are. And uh, we're recommending that we maintain those threshold numbers about the same. So the main why there is to avoid confusion, really. Right. And then there's also the room tax ordinance that because of this law, we have to make some minor changes to that. There's a misconception out there that we're changing the, the room tax uh, to apply to uh, people that do rent during EAA and short-term rentals, the reality is that already exists. Not now, a new tax. It's not a new tax. It's not new anything. But uh, now people are asking the question because, frankly, a lot of people don't report or uh, we're not aware of people renting out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm asking the council to lay this item over, even though this is a second reading. We want to take a look at this. Uh, I don't know what options necessarily exist if we can or cannot take that requirement away. But right now, we are supposed to collect on day one of a rental, we're not. I know we're not receiving it, so we got to make sure we get that all worked out. Excellent. So you mentioned this is the second reading. What what are we going to see in the future on future agendas and conversations moving forward with this one? Well, we, the the zoning part of it, I think we can probably get adopted at this meeting. Okay. Uh, but the the room tax one, because of that confusion, and we if if people want to try to find a way to exempt. Uh, rentals of less than 10 days in a year, uh, we have some work to do because that ordinance isn't, uh, it's already there, so we'd have to undo something. Right. And so I want to make sure we've got that all taken care of. So I'm just asking council to lay it over, and I suspect that they'll, they'll follow that idea because they had asked for us to get some input from the lodging community and that. And we're very close with the CVB, but a lot of their, uh, a lot of the people who rent during EAA got a little nervous, and so we've got to make sure that that they're okay with us. Wonderful. Well, thank you for the background on that, Mark, and definitely a to be continued on information with that. Moving down under new ordinances, we've got a zone change for 2020 South Keller Street. And this one, I have to say, I've seen a little bit of buzz on social media about this property. People have noticed that this area, um, this property has been closed for a little while, and they're curious what's going on. I expected to see this on a question mark, to be honest with yeah. you. That's the uh, former mobile station at 20th and Keller. A lot of people don't realize it's now closed. The tapes around the gas pumps and everything. And so this is the location. And um, actually, Associated Bank is proposed proposing to put a, a branch there. And so that's what the purpose of this zoning is, uh, is to uh, permit it and, and allow that process to follow with a bank and the things that would be required there. So I know it's gotten a lot of uh, interest, like you said, on social media. So I figured it's on the agenda. We might as well let people know, but it looks like the mobile station is gone for keeps. Oh, yes. Well, it was worth mentioning because people are curious about it. So thank you for the update on that. Moving down under new resolutions, um, we've got the approval of the city manager 2019 goals. Mark, you want to take us through a brief overview of what those are? Yeah, we had a great discussion. Uh, I had a great discussion with council about things that they would like me to achieve in 2019, uh, specific things. Uh, usually over and above our strategic plan or consistent with it. So just four general areas that they're going to be talking to me about or at least uh, you know, discussing uh, and voting on. Uh, one is a long-term debt strategy. We're very fortunate that we, we reached our 20 year 2020 goal two years early, but now it's like long-term, what do we want to do? We got a lot of things that are unforeseen. Think of Oshkosh Corporation and the arena. We got to be ready for those things. Emergency preparation training. Um, we need to do more of it. We need to be prepared for these emergencies. And so council is very aware of that and asked me to uh, you know, take the lead on getting some of those things done. Uh, policy for acquisition and disposal of real estate that's owned by the city. A lot of different properties that are out there and how do you address those? What's the process to follow that? And so I, I think it's a, it's a good thing to do. And then finally, uh, 
collaborating with uh, the group that's uh, running Unity and Community, as well as other uh, collaborative initiatives throughout the community on, on diversity and inclusion, making sure that, that I'm at the table when those discussions are taking place. And if we have a role, I can come back to council and, and suggest those things. And I'm gonna be joining some groups on some visits to other communities who are doing that. So I'm already uh, on, on the way to, uh, to working on that goal. Wow, so a, a wide range of um, responsibilities for the 2019 goals, and um, we're looking forward to hearing about all the work that's gonna be done to accomplish these in 2019. So yes. thanks for taking us through that, Mark. Um, now we've got an item that is, it's been a, a very important item, a lot of talk about this the last few months. I'm gonna read the whole item here. It's recommendation from Long Range Finance Committee regarding funding option to replace street and sidewalk special assessments. Um, so Mark, I'm gonna kind of hand it over to you. Um, we've been talking a lot about vehicle registration Registration fees, um, and this is relating to that. So, why don't you take us through what we've what, what, what we've come to to this point? Well, communities have been discussing the uh, in our area. They've been discussing the possibility of a vehicle registration fee. A lot of people call it a wheel tax mm -hmm. to replace special assessments. A lot of communities have been looking at that. Uh, Green Bay and Appleton have both done that. Um, and our friends to the north and Nina uh, took a different approach with it. But it all has to do with. Uh, getting rid of special assessments for streets and in some cases sidewalks. And the Long Range Finance Committee took a look at the approach that was done in Nina and it's called a street utility fee. It's a little different from the vehicle registration fee and, and uh, it applies to a broader group of property owners because with a vehicle registration fee, it's only vehicles 8,000 pounds or less. Anything over that you don't pay at all. And in some cases, you have tax-exempt property that generates traffic but doesn't have vehicles, so they wouldn't be paying it. Um, I think uh, the, the Long Range Finance Committee thought this option was perhaps a little more equitable. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's, uh, that's what really what they're proposing. It's going to be comparable in nature to the stormwater utility fee. It's going to be primarily based on impervious surface, but there's gonna be a cap for businesses and in large properties, but this is the process that they would like to go through. The challenge is that even as we've looked at what Nina's done, a lot of unanswered questions. So all we're asking council to do is take the committee's recommendation, if they would like us to pursue it, to direct us to begin working on uh, rules and regulations, ordinances, resolutions that will uh, get this, get the wheels in motion for that. That's going to take a little while before we come back. So stay tuned. Yes. We'll be providing more information as time goes on. So approval is not happening at this meeting. On this no, item. there's no way we could do that in this mm -hmm. short amount of time, but we're getting good direction. And then it'll give us an idea if that's the case, then we can start working on it and bring it back to council uh, at a later time. Excellent. Well, great overview of that and definitely be on the lookout for more information moving forward as we continue this conversation and then just really briefly under announcements and statements we just wanted to mention the process for review of unused liquor licenses um, what's going to be happening with this policy mark uh, the council has uh, given some extensions for people who have unused liquor licenses and staff believes that we need to tighten that up a little bit so that council has the ability to grant extensions appropriately and people understand that. So we're gonna present uh, some ideas to council, get a little bit of a direction at a later time, but we need to get this out by March so that when we do liquor license renewals, if people aren't uh, using their license, they understand what the uh, the repercussions could be if they if they don't uh, get moving on it. Yes, this has long been a topic of concern and conversation. So looking forward to establishing more of a formalized policy in the future, you could say. Exactly. Excellent. So that's all the time that we have for a city manager's report today. Mark, as always, I'd like to thank you for joining us and for the abundance of information that you provide every show. Happy to do it. <laughs> Again, the Common Council meeting is this Tuesday, January 22nd at 6 p.m. You can watch it live on GovTV and on our website, oshkoshmedia.org, or you can listen to it on the radio at 101.9 Oshkosh FM, which is also online and on the TuneIn app for mobile devices. Make sure you like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter for all of your community and government programming and updates, or be sure to check out our YouTube channel for all of our wonderful government meeting replays and past episodes of some of your favorite programs. Don't forget, if you have a question for City Manager Mark Roloff, send it to us on Twitter, post it to our Facebook page, or email it to us, and he will answer it on the next episode of City Manager's Report. So once again, thanks for joining us on CMR, and we'll see you next time.